So here we go. Basically, this chapter is presenting the data that's going to be used throughout the book. It's the Ames housing data. It's data for 2,900 plus properties in Iowa, which was compiled as a, um, as a uh, research project. And uh, there's plenty of characteristics there in the original data, which is not going to be used exactly as it was. There were eight different variables for the housings for housing, but some of them were uh, how do you say, some of them were, were edited or improved upon to make sure that uh, we don't have to be doing like a massive amount of effort to 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 analyze the data later. So the main goal of the chapter as a whole is just exploratory data analysis, just getting comfortable with the data and having a better grasp of what's in the data set. And I know that this was discussed in the, in previous chapters, which is saying like exploration of the data is the base of everything. And I'm sure like for people who already do this consistently know how important it is to make sure you're familiar with your data before you go into any sort of uh, analysis. And one thing that I found I, I thought was missing from the, the information on the chapter was the data documentation file, which I found uh, later and I can post in the channel if anybody wants that because there's just a, like there's no explanation of some of the fields for me. Some of them and uh, I'll show you here were very tough to, to decipher. So there's like base. I found this this basement. Uh, I was just not familiar with like what this would be. Um, the SF here, I just can't remember what it is right now. But there's explanations for everything. So there's like a, a long form wording for every single variable, which makes it much easier for understanding what the heck you're looking at. Um, anyway, continuing the, they actually removed a few properties based on one variable that was mostly missing data, so there was no point keeping it, which reduced it down to 2700 sort of. And they actually changed a lot of the of the variables where uh, they were coding stuff as 0, 010, 0, 020, 0, 030, depending on what was the, the feature. And that makes it really hard when you're trying to figure out what does that mean. So if, for example, there's, sorry, I don't know if I can see it over here, but um, there were, oh yeah. So for example, the street one that says like, what type of street is a grave or is a pavement, etc. It was coded as, uh, I think, 010, 020, up to 080, and they just, or, I know that, that probably don't them because this one only has two levels. But anyway, there were a few of them that were uh, coded this way and they were turned into actual wording, which makes it so much simpler for, for us to understand what, can actually influence the, the regression later on. And the other thing that was done was to convert uh, most of them to factor, which is so much better when you're looking at trying to categorize things. I just really, I really love factors <laughs> in general. So I was really happy to see that they did it already. And there was, there's a mention about a set of quality descriptors that were removed. Uh, that were variables. I couldn't find out exactly which ones were removed. Uh, I just didn't have enough time to actually go and compare the two data sets, the original and the one that we're going to use throughout the book. So, um, yeah, so basically um, getting to the data. So you can load this data either through the model data library or you can just load Taiji models and we'll bring model data with it because it's a meta package. Then you can you can load the Ames data by just using the data command with the Ames, which is uh, it makes it super simple to use it. Um, so you can do so, like you can do some quick like uh, view of the of the data set, but just see how many lines there are, how many variables are left, and so on, and then. We follow on with exploring the features, which here they only give us a very brief analysis. Uh, there's a lot more that can be done. So here we're just looking at like what's the, the distribution. The histogram here shows that it's skewed. There's like I say here, there's a lot more cheaper houses than expensive ones. You have some like really outliers over here, just like very few that are 
over a certain price. And then the authors make a point that you should log transform it. And for me, it's just something that's very new, log transforming stuff. I've done that before, but mostly because my supervisor in my degree just said, do this, and not exactly because I knew what I was doing. So I went to look into some information of when should you log transform. And I, there might be lots of reasons, but the one that actually resonated with me, it was saying, when you care about the absolute values, you may not want to log transform because you may lose sight when you have to compare the units in log form. But when you only care about relative, then it makes sense. And I think in this case, it might it makes sense because we're trying to actually as well, not only that, but also to try and do prediction, which prevents having negative predictions, which would never happen in market. And Please correct me if something I say makes no sense. Uh, oh, next. So then that's we can actually do a log 10 transformation, and that's the data that's going to be used. So they replace the whole sale price of the houses with the log of it, so that going forward, that's what we're going to be using. So just like uh, make sure that you use this before next chapters if you're ever running any code, because otherwise you're not going to get the same results, I'm guessing. And um, yeah, I can like, there's a point here about the use of root mean squared error for performance metric. I am not familiar with this, so I can't really speak to it. If anybody has an understanding of how this is used, I'm, I'm assuming that if you've done a lot of regression before you would, I don't. So I can't really speak to it. I'm skipping this part. And what is this? Yeah, so then there comes the most interesting part, which is plotting on a map so you can have a look and see what's the distribution like spatially, which I thought was super, super interesting. Uh, you can see neighborhoods distributed, and then each one of them gets uh, a color and a shape, of course. So you can look like what is going on over here. So like there's a big gap, which means this is the Iowa University or the University of Iowa, that is a thing. And so everything revolves around that. So there's a lot of like inferences in terms of like the type of like a price you could expect depending on like how far or how close it is. So that just understanding the data in that sense, knowing how the, the, the town is laid out even can give us some more insights that we can use for the down the line. Um, what else? So there's also like it's a really good way of finding some outliers and some like weird stuff in the data, because for example, if you look here, uh, it is this Timberland neighborhood is over here and it's like sorry. Over here is further from most other ones. Like you have this one is like super separated from the others. So it, this can all affect later on, I suppose. You have neighborhoods that are ensconced inside others. And I, I kind of like a big, and this is from my very brief understanding of how to do any sort of uh, analysis or regression. But I wonder if that would affect when you're trying to, to group them in some sense, and then because you have two different types that are together spatially, that could have some kind of effect on your analysis. And um, yeah, like you have some points that are marked as being part of one neighborhood while actually physically being another, and that could be down to, to errors in the data. Only it goes to show how important it is to do good data cleaning ahead of time and making sure the data makes sense Otherwise, the analysis will never make sense. And then you have like really like separated uh, points, which supposedly belong to a larger neighborhood, even though they are quite far apart and so on. So it shows also all different types of uh, outlying situations that can arise from the data. And it's something that you should really take into consideration when doing some sort of data analysis. Um, and also, like, the one thing that I, I really like is that the pointing out that you can look for right, high correlation between those predictors because there's, a, like, you have 74 things here. Some of them do sound a lot alike and sound like they would absolutely cause 
the like a, a collinearity between them where you say okay they are basically measuring the same thing so they're not adding to our model in any sense and we can just get rid of them um, what else Let me see. i have some notes for myself here um, yeah i think i think i got to do my notes sorry yes that's it so basically um this explores the data uh, i think there's a lot more questions that could be asked from the data in the stage i i wasn't sure exactly how much i should do for the book club if i'm being honest if i should go too deep and because i was new to this whole thing i decided to just keep to presenting what this is and what is talked about so i think it, that's that's the end of the presentation for the time being any questions, comments? I just stop sharing now. Seems like I'm not talking. So, so back um, to the R RMSC thing. Does um, that's just a measure of the variation within compared to your model, right? You're taking the difference of the mean at that point versus the variation that you see in your data squared because it could be positive or negative or is it yeah, residuals uh, root mean squared error is a common measure of forecast accuracy you can compare it well i shouldn't say forecast uh modeling accuracy i think about it in the context of time series but let's see yeah you compare um you take the mean the square root of the mean of the uh, squared errors belief, uh, but I have to go back and look at the formula. But it's a con you can compare it if you have the same dependent variable. Um, but if you transform, you can't compare between models. So if you have the same dependent variable for your model, you can compare. But if you had one where you're taking the log, you obviously wouldn't compare that to one where you had not transformed the data. I think that's and probably that's common sense to most of us, but just thought I'd mention it. And that's used for model comparison? Yeah, so kind of accuracy, you know what I mean? You want the lower, the better. Obviously, since it's an error, obviously R squared would be you want the higher, well, adjusted R squared, because <laughs> we know R squared can be artificial, kind of subject to overfitting. But um, root mean squared error, you kind of want um, the better. It's not, I mean, like weight measures like MAPE and, you know, are more like percent. And those, but um, you can't really compare root mean squared error between like models necessarily, unless it's like the dependent variable is the same, but um, it's still a useful, like if you're looking at a model and you're like, oh, the root mean squared error goes down, especially on the test set, you're like, this is probably a better model, you know, um, obviously there's art to it, not just, you know, maybe there would be other reasons, maybe you got lucky, you know, <laughs> on that particular test set, if, unless you're doing cross-validation, but yep. Anybody want to chime in? Any who does any kind of forecasting or? Um, yeah, I wanted to, to share something with you because um, uh, I was uh, looking at the special uh, data uh, and uh, um, apply model to spatial data, just as the same as uh, the things that happen in the. I don't know if you if you would like to see it, um, just as the same in uh, in the in the book. I. I think. Did, are you all having trouble? I am. Yeah, okay, I think okay, your okay. internet connection. Yeah, I thought a maybe it was right me now. for a second. No, I wondered if it was me too. <laughs> Sometimes the internet's Thanks. a little slow, but I think it's frozen. I'm so sorry. I missed the whole thing. I I, <laughs> I have COVID and I completely slept oh, no. through, and then I woke up and I was like, oh no. How are you doing? You feeling okay? Oh, I'm fine. That's. Uh, it's like a crappy cold, but honestly, I'm, I'm triple vaccinated, and so it's a crappy cold. <laughs> so. All right. 
uh, sorry, I, I just, uh, I don't know, my line dropped down. I don't know why I've started seeing people stuck. So I was saying, do, would you like me to show you how to make the map just as the same as in the chapter? Sure. Uh, yeah. With a model, so like uh, making a, a special model. Yeah, All right, okay. That's good. <laughs> All right. So uh, I was uh, looking at this data, which are uh, uh, different from the MS data, um, but uh, I, I uh, think that we can uh, use both. So we can use uh, the, uh, the MS data as well as this, uh, this data here. Um, the, uh, Mm, okay, in this this case, there's um, this is um, <clears throat> uh, basically applying a model to spatial data uh, using um, um, uh, uh, this package, which is special uh, uh, special uh, epi, and it contains data for. Um, uh, like some epidemics uh, in the, um, uh, in Scotland, in New York, and uh, in, um, in Pennsylvania. Um, and um, I'd like to to show you um, these things. For example, if I select Data Scotland, in this case, I have uh, like county names. Uh, this is a um, uh, type of data list. Okay, um, and if I do, for example, I want to see names, uh, um, this Scotland, what type of uh, um, data set contains. Uh, he has a geo data set, data data set, special polygons and polygons. The data, um, the Scotland, um, Uh, the Scotland and data, so the, the data set contains the name of the county in Scotland, the number of cases for cancer, lip cancer, the expected number of cases and the increase of the, so the, basically the number of cases on the expected ones to see uh, the percentage. So the, the purpose of this uh, thing is to see this data applied into a geophysical uh, environment. So, uh, and then apply a model, make a model to see how these uh, cases would evolve uh, within um, the area. Uh, then we can do the same with the MS data. Um, uh, so I use, uh, uh, for example, so I said that this Scotland um, has a, a different data set inside. The data set, the data, data set, we have already seen it uh, with the number of cases. And then there is the geo um, set inside, which contains the latitude and the longitude. Uh, so the geo codes, the values that we need for, for plotting the data. So if we do this, so we say that we see the, if you use simple uh, ggplot function, we see that he plots the, just the points, but it doesn't define no, the, uh, the margin. Uh, to use ggplot, for example, for making uh, a map without any other packages, but just using the plot. And we have special data, so we can use the function 45. Uh, 45 basically transform a special data into a data frame so that uh, ggplot can, can use it. So if we do 45, uh, we see that we obtain a new data set with uh, a, as long longitude and long, latitude and um, the ID, which are the county uh, as we we had. Um, so now what, what we want uh, is to make a map um, and how we do it is using ggplot, um, 
setting up the main arguments uh, with the Scotland data, so with the cases and the expected cases and everything, and then map this value by county. Uh, we can use this function, which is geomap, because now we have uh, the um, uh, basically the, these uh, uh, values that have been transformed in the in a data frame format, so they can be use it inside a geomap uh, function. So I do geomap and then map equal to map because I've called it the same and then fill it of, um, based on the number of cases. Then I must absolutely add these expand limits with the longitude and the latitude uh, to uh, obtain this map. <laughs> Okay, so this is the map of Scotland. Maybe it's a bit like, uh, not very, I don't know how, how you, do you see it very large maybe? Um, okay. So um, as you can see, this is uh, Scotland and the, the, um, uh, so the different colors uh, are indicated uh, low, the, the, the darker colors are the lowest uh, cases and the lighter color, just as the opposite as one could expect, uh, are the, 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 the highest number of cases. So now I uh, repeated the, the procedure uh, just as the same as before, but with the expected uh, cases that we had uh, in the Scotland data. So as you can see, there is difference. So now the expected, uh, the lower number are darker and the, uh, so the, the, the darker cases are quite, uh, um, a higher number uh, compared to uh, the cases that we have seen before. Uh, and so it, uh, apparently the expected um, number of cases are lower, uh, strongly lower than, uh, than, than the cases. So what, uh, what uh, if we do use, um, I go fast if there's any, the, Mm, just jump in and ask me questions. So I use patchwork to mm, use the two plots together to see them together. Um, and here you can mm, see uh, slightly better the differences uh, between cases and ex versus expected. So now apparently it takes uh, quite a long time. I don't know why, but uh, I go forward uh, because what I, um, uh, I want uh, uh, to do is make a model, okay? So for, uh, let's, let's open a, a parenthesis, okay? And say that for modeling cases, so like numbers, uh, natural numbers, like one, two, uh, two infinity, but not, we are not interested in what is inside between one and two. So the most appropriate uh, type of model would be a Poisson using um, a family Poisson model. Um, in this case, uh, we, uh, for just to show up how to make special model, um, we use uh, the linear model function, okay? And this is not uh, with tidy models. Uh, we apply tidy model later to, to show you the difference. Uh, and uh, so to the difference. So basically the, that the results are the same, are the same both numerically speaking than uh, even visually uh, within the spatial environment. So we take a Scotland data assigned to Scotland data name, and we model uh, this Scotland data um, within the coordinates. So I do a left join and add the map set 
with the coordinates, this one here, to Scotland data uh, with the cases. I do left join, so I have all the rows from Scotland data, and I had the information from map, uh, uh, merging them by uh, I, uh, county names, uh, which is ID in the map uh, data set. So I did this and I have my new model data, which has the county names, the cases, the expected, and then at the end, uh, the, long, the longitude and the latitude. So all I needed to, to make my model, because what I wanted to do is to see, to predict the number of cases, in this case of lip cancer, based on uh, uh, longitude and latitude. Okay, so I use a linear model. It's quite it's for educational purposes, so it doesn't mean doesn't mean to to be. Uh, so it's to learn uh, the syntax of uh, do, for doing these things. Uh, so we use uh, the base R for making a linear model. Uh, so we fit the model, and then with broom package and the tidy function, we obtain the result. So we see that uh, these are, uh, this is the value of the longitude when there is, um, so the longitude uh, would increase of one unit on average for an increase of the, uh, of one unit on average of the number of cases, as well as the latitude, okay? So this is not very informative at the moment uh, because what we want is to predict the number of cases. So uh, we, um, uh, uh, where is it? So with this function predict uh, fit, so um, I use predict fit to predict um, the number of cases. So, which are different from the expected values that there are inside the, 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 pack, the, the data set. So, with this function, predict fit, okay, what I, uh, I obtain is uh, um, a vector of predicted value, which are uh, as uh, the same length of my data set. So I can C bind, color bi colon bind, uh, my data set with these new values, which are the predicted values, to obtain a data set uh, which is completed. I select some columns, and as you can see, now I have the county names, the cases, the expected, and the predict values. You see that the cases are nine, for example, and the predict value is 10.43. Uh, this is the, within this uh, location. Okay, what do we do is now uh, apply this, uh, um, this thing to our uh, uh, geographical uh, environment. The same thing can be done done with tidy models, of course, no? So with tidy models, uh, we use linear regression if we do um, with an engine of linear model for making the model. This is uh, a bit forward in the book. So I, I just uh, do a little touch of this, and this is what tidy model does. Basically, um, it's like, uh, it's, it's as the same as using ggplot function. And so the ggplot, the syntax instead of just the plot function. So the LM function uh, can be compared to uh, um, the plot function and the ggplot syntax to the uh, tidy model syntax in this case with for, for LM, so the linear model, the linear regression, a set an engine and set the mode. Because what is the difference? The difference is that with tidy models, you can, uh, sorry about the confusion, I'm just trying to um, 
Ok. Um, uh, so with Teddy model, you can uh, set uh, like different engines and uh, set other parameters and parameters differently. Not for a linear model, because the mode will be always a regression, cannot be anything else. Uh, so the procedure can be repeated with uh, tidy model syntax uh, using fit model spec, for example, with a formula and the predict function to obtain a vector of the predicted values, which is exactly as the same as this one here. Okay. This is what we are going to do through the, the book. So this is uh, a part of the tidy model syntax. Um, as, as well as before, I bounded, uh, uh, they, they are the same uh, uh, number of rows of my data. So I merged the two information uh, to obtain a model uh, data and select uh, my uh, columns, so my variables. Again, I have the same thing. Now it's called dot pred, but the values are just the same. So if I do this and take uh, uh, this one here, We can see that one is here and one is the other one, and they are exactly the same. Okay, so the difference is that you uh, using tidy models. This is not the only way to do this. Many more, many ways. Like you, the formula can be used within uh, a receipt function, and then you can do data wrangling within the receipt. Uh, and then uh, with a workflow, which is another function, unify the receipt, uh, the model, engine, and uh, the fit all together. Um, this is so just one way to use the tidy model syntax. Um, okay, so now what, what do we do? We, we have, uh, we can choose within the two models that we want to use because they, the way to, to make a model because they have released the same result. So now we apply this result, uh, one is this, to the uh, plot, to the maps that we have done it before. Okay, just as the same as before, but now this is the exactly the, the, the same as the one that we, we did it with the number of cases. And this is the other one. Instead of plotting, instead of making a map of the expected value, I'm making, I'm making a map of the predicted values obtained when, within, with, with the model. So now I should be able to uh, release the same result, result as before. And as you can see, uh, you have uh, cases versus predicted. And this is a spe special uh, data model. Okay. Uh, this is what uh, um, is, has been used uh, in, the, um, in the book. Uh, just as, uh, as the same as here. Ja, uh, the difference is that uh, this is a, um, a different map. So, um, and the, um, uh, th this value have been plotted just as a dot. So with geom points, instead of filling the entire, entire uh, area, uh, these are just dots with different shapes. And this, uh, this map is um, slightly different and you can obtain this resolution, very close resolution with open maps and uh, using the Google API or maybe with Leleft uh, and everything. So, and then, um, uh, when uh, 
you use the uh, res the, sol the the information obtained with um with the model you can uh, effectively to see the difference the differences uh plotted in uh, in an area and then uh, ask for the color of the the different levels uh basically so um I wanted to see if we uh, do this with um, maybe MS data. Remember what, what uh, how they did it? So data, model data, okay. If, if you want to jump in and, uh, I don't know, suggest things or anything, just uh, ask questions, I don't know. I'm kind of surprised you can just do correlations or linear regressions on um, latitude and longitude values like that. Like, if I think about it, it makes sense that you can, but I, I've never worked with spatial data, so I just wouldn't have ex expected okay. that it would just work like that in a linear way. <laughs> I, I don't hear you anymore. I can't hear you. Oh, it's because I stopped talking. So <laughs> I was just <laughs> okay. I, I, I was just surprised that you could just throw uh, latitude and longitude in, into a linear model, and it worked. Uh, yeah, you can do it because they 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 are numbers. So uh, the um, the function. Is the linear regression just uses uh, them as a numbers? So and it takes consideration of the uh, of the differences. So we can do this, uh, for example, with uh, the MS data, and say what what did they use? Do you know, uh, Laura, what uh, the year built? Uh, what uh, oh, so do you mean with variable? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was the sale price. Okay. And, uh, latitude so, and longitude. Okay. So for, uh, but they didn't, they didn't use, um, uh, so this is the, uh, um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, oh, yeah. Do, do you think we should use uh, um, the LM function or we should use uh, something else? What should we use? Can we set up a model with this data like fit or mod AMS and say, what do we use? Uh, um, do you yeah, have would, an idea? Yeah, I would think linear mo model just regression just because it's continuous. Theoretically, a sale price is continuous data, right? All right. Okay. So then, then uh, we have data. Ames. Uh, we use uh, what we say we use the um, sales. What is it? Oh, it looks like Laura put in, um, it was sale yeah, price as a function of neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry that I didn't. I, I should be talking, I don't know what I'm typing. Um, uh, they asked first that there's the transformation into log 10 for the sale price as well, because that's not default. So I can post the code uh, here. Okay, let's, let's take okay. this. So just, um, here you go. Okay. The, uh, the, this transformation would be then applied to with the receipt function and the step function. So we, we transform this uh, uh, and have, have a new AMS uh, data with the sale price, which is now uh, log 10. So in the LM function, we put like formula 
uh, equal to uh, the sales price, which is the outcome. So the, the things that we want uh, to predict. Uh, and then the latitude and the longitude. Uh, no, sorry, that was my bad. It was actually the neighborhood. So it's a bit less granular, I suppose, like it's not, it's more. I don't, popular. I don't, um, I can't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, use the neighborhood variable instead of the latitude and longitude. It must be somewhere. Ah, and, and then how, how do I plot it? Uh, it was plotted on a map. Ah, okay. But, um, yeah, but uh, I still, I suppose you can, you can just, I, I made the DLM for it. Uh, with the long, uh, with the neighborhood, I posted here in the chat the line that I used, which is just a sale price by neighborhood. Okay, neighborhood. let's select some yeah. some data so we have we do the things easier. And then the latitude, and then uh, what? Where is it? This in the chat. Uh, the uh, set uh, neighborhood. Okay, that that's what we want. So we have now uh, sales price in a log uh, scale. And uh, the uh, neighborhood, we can use the neighborhood here. So we will this thing with, let's call it fit, Ames. And then with the room because I, I feel comfortable with this tidy function. So I see. Okay, so there's quite a certain number of neighborhoods and one is the base. Uh, so it's considered as, a, as the, the, the base one and the other one uh, uh, varies uh, to the so the other is zero. So basically, the the, the base one, the one that, me, that we miss from this list, is zero, and the other ones are um, around that value. Uh, and so this, for example, is a positive value. So suppose that on average, for one unit increase of sales price, this increase of zero point thirteen this neighbor college, college Creek. So that means that in terms of uh, houses, uh, the sales price for one unit of increase of the sales price on average uh, in the neighborhood of College Creek, the uh, price would increase of 0 0.14 something like that. Instead for old town will decrease of 0.08 on average for each, for one unit increase of sales price. So I think this is an example where when we're doing linear models, um, I don't know who was there last week when we were going over like introduction, introduction to base R versus like tidy models. Like, I think this is a great example of like where it's just so much easier to use base R LM than going through like, I, for doing just a simple linear model, I find the tidy models um, like yeah. verbiage, very, like, yeah, I agree. you have to type a lot of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Whereas I, like, I feel like we're the advantage, I do not know much about tidy models, probably um, less than many of you, but my impression is the advantage of it is where you get into a lot of like parameter tuning yeah. Um, versus like just doing a linear regression or something like that. But maybe I'm missing something. I'm sure I'll yeah. learn more as we go through the book. 
also next week yeah, with, I, um spending I your think data that's kind of the yeah the advantage just uh being able to kind of um wrap up your you know pre-processing and everything into a nice uh forgive my phrasing tidy package that you can <laughs> just repeat and, re and revisit i think i think that's kind of what it is yeah if you were just doing like you could just do lm and, and get a linear model like that bang um but i think it's just meant to be you know a, a better workflow and a, a repeatable thing so that's that part of sense. the advantage Okay, so now we have pred, the prediction, the cells, and the latitude and the longitude. Um, and we can uh, um, plot this uh, data. Uh, yes, GG. Uh, Plot the map ID. Where is it? You can see ID. The map ID. Uh, um, map ID. Uh, map ID. Uh, because um, it's not very common uh, the use of uh, this geom map. Uh, even if one, uh, I don't know, Ryan, if you remember, when you did it, the um, okay. the the map uh, chapter uh, uh, simple uh, features, the SF two. package. Yeah. But in ggplot two, they didn't mention about the geom map function. Uh, sorry. There's a, a the, there's a, uh, uh, what's that? It's an acronym <laughs> for a map. Uh, you've got to pull in that particular point to use the special or simple features. Um, let me see if I can go find that snippet real quick. So map ID neighbor, uh, map ID neighbor. Uh, and then I miss this thing here, expand limits. Fill with um, red. Uh, uh, this my address. Okay. Uh, where is my piece missing? Argument, my eye, okay. Map, map uh, previously map was in the geo map call. Um, so it's not in it's not in AES. It was part of the geo map. Uh, uh, map equals map was what it was previously for the Scotland data. See, yes, but map uh, was a data set. Um, right, was it data? Was, yeah. So I need to make this modification. Was, yeah, map was fortify Scotland um, money spatial uh, dot polygon. So it was a spatial polygon already. Uh, I, I don't. I don't have that. No, it was. It was in the previous example, the one that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But as I do not have that now. Oh, yeah. Mm. And the ID. Okay. Uh, Okay, there you go. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> Anybody been to Ames? <laughs> it looks like. 
<laughs> it looks great. <laughs> well, you can definitely see the university in the center. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just have to interrupt. I have to go to another meeting. Sorry, I have to drop out. I'll watch the last one. Okay. Later. Thank you so much okay. for, for having me here. See, see, yeah, see nice you next you. time. Sure. See ya. Bye. 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 Okay. So GeoMap is not, uh, uh, I think, very, very good for this. Uh, okay. Enrico, what, I think what we were using before uh, in the, the the chapter six ggplot book club, it we didn't use GeoMap uh, as a as a function. It, it is capable of doing that. Um, all the references I'm seeing here was like uh, coordination quick map is one way or geom point. Uh, they were they were throwing in Latin lawn values based on on uh, data, but I think is that answering your question? Maybe. Mm, no, that was just uh, simply uh, different. It does, you see that um, uh, there is a polygon, uh, so we yeah. don't have the polygon. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, But I wanted to see if I could do the same, uh, but the map can apparently can be used um, if I do geom points. Um, In that case, uh, longitude is X and latitude is Y. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, uh, what, what I did it, this, I did it, uh, the, the longitude and the, the longitude. I, th I think you have to reference it, right, in the point, yeah. AES. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay, so now we don't have the map because, um, the base of this map should be uh, used, uh, made with um, uh, open um, open maps, and you um, or you can overcome this thing. Um, but that uh, uh, precision, you know, that view, that closer view of the streets, um, it would be easier to be made with OpenStreetMap and with the Google API. But um, we have uh, reached um, a point. Okay, so we see this and then we may do shape equal to the same as neighborhood. So uh, that's different. Uh -uh. This goes inside the aesthetic. I like it, this geom map. What the, the shape? I get the maximum of six. Uh, okay, so that's why maybe in the book they did it something like that. So like I like split the, the area. I think they just have uh, points in the book maybe. I'm trying to remember. I don't mm -hmm. like different colors because I can see this. there are a lot of like, this is a little harder for me to see where it's, but this kind of makes more sense, mm -hmm. I guess, just based on colors. We can add a, a, um, a title, uh, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Um, well, I don't know what what should I uh, put as a title, and then maybe that that would be better as a caption. I miss that up. Uh, 
that's something uh, sales uh, neighborhood um okay just leave it at that So and then uh, I think we have passed the hour of three minutes. <laughs> um, the, this geom map is very, very interesting, but apparently you cannot use it uh, without, uh, I don't know. I think that, that can be used. It's the grouping things that is wrong. So the, the grouping things need to be adjusted somehow. Um, but now we haven't got time to, to look for that. So who does the next chapter next week? Uh, Laura? No, me. No, I think it's uh, me. Anna. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm next. I'm the week after that. Uh, Spending our data. Stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. All right, so hope that helps somehow a bit. Uh, any questions? Just uh, I don't know. Save it for next week. Yeah, I, that was very interesting <laughs> with the map stuff. I, I don't have a lot of experience with ggplot too. Maybe I need to join a book club uh, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> uh, but that was really cool to see that kind of come together. What you've done with that. So thank you for sharing. Thank you very yeah. much for Thanks. attending. Thank you. See you next week. Bye now. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.